So uh, just some facts about Starship. And th these, these numbers will evolve over time. Um, so uh, the height of the ship is about 50 meters, 164 feet. Uh, the 9 meter or 30 foot uh, diameter. Well, you can just see it, basically. Um, <laughs> Um, it's got about 1,200 tons of, of propellant on the, the ship, and uh, thrust is about 1,500 tons. Um, now these numbers will, you know, we'll probably add more propellant over time, increase thrust. Um, diameter will will stay the same. It's a huge, huge pain to change diameter. <laughs> so that, that'll tend to stay the same, but it'll probably get a little bit longer. And uh, we're expecting payload capacity of uh, 100 to 150 tons, depending on, on which orbit. Um, so to, uh, to a Starlink orbit, uh, it, roughly 100 tons. Um, yeah. uh, over time, I think we can probably get the, the orbit for um, orbital refilling, the, the, the payload to an orbit for orbital refilling to about 200 tons, uh, which is going to be very important for uh, getting to Mars. So for getting to Mars, you, you, you also need the orbital refilling. Just like you have um, aerial refueling, um, ro the rockets will need orbital uh, refilling. It's actually mostly uh, oxygen. The, there's um, three and a half tons of oxygen for every one ton of fuel. So that's why it's refilling, not refueling. So. Uh, heat shield. <laughs> so this is the world's largest heat shield. Um, and uh, this is, uh, we actually make this at, uh, at our little factory in, in Florida near Cape Canaveral. Uh, we call it the bakery. And uh, we're actually using a lot of techniques that are uh, used for roofing tiles. So we, we need to have a heat shield that uh, is capable of resisting extreme heat, but also is not uh, crazy expensive. And um, our heat shield team has done, done amazing work in creating uh, the world's largest uh, heat shield and one that is uh, reusable. Uh, but also uh, robust and uh, low cost. So uh, it's, not a, it's not a crazy money heat shield. And um, yeah, we need, need good heat shield technology for uh, entering from orbit. Orbital, orbital refilling. Um, <clears throat> we were going to do an animation of this, but it uh, looked a bit wrong. Um, <laughs> it is a fluid transfer. Uh, like, <laughs> Um, so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> play a little Barry White, you know. Uh, okay. um, so th that's one of the technologies that is necessary for um, getting to Mars. So uh, the ship would get to orbit with with its payload, <laughs> and um, and and then. And then in orbit, we'd refill the tanks so it would have enough repellent uh, to, to get to Mars. Mars is far. Um, so now, now with, this is essentially uh, docking in orbit. And, and I, with um, Dragon docking with the space station, this is a technology that, we've, um, that SpaceX has become quite good at. We've done, um, I, I think at this point, a couple dozen uh, dockings with the space station, and it's it's actually way harder to dock with the space station than to dock with yourself. Um, so this is, uh, you know, it, it is a thing we need to to, to uh, solve for Starship, but I'm confident that we can do this because we've done uh, a lot of uh, orbital docking already uh, with the Dragon. Um, but this is going to be an important thing to to demonstrate. Um, what won't be necessary in the near term for Starlink launches, but it will be necessary for for Mars and the Moon. So let's see, super, the Super Heavy Booster. So it, it was 70 meters, um, but then uh, there was an extra half barrel section that the team deleted, and totally accidentally, it's 69 meters. <laughs> <laughs> it's also Booster 4 and Ship 20. I mean, this is a pure coincidence. I, those numbers won't leave me alone. I, it was just, um, I hope it's good luck. Um, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so propellant capacity is like around 3,400 tons. I think, it, this, like I so said, these, these, it'll probably, uh, it, it will increase over time, probably get to 36, maybe 3,800 tons. Um, thrust is around 7,600 tons. Uh, that'll probably increase too over time. 
Um, just to put this into perspective, though, the Saturn V was uh, seven and a half million pounds of thrust, and um, Starship is 17. So it's more than twice the thrust of a Saturn V, which was quite, that was, that's the largest rocket ever to get to orbit. Um, it's worth noting, Super Heavy is, is the, the largest flying object of any kind, or will be. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, um, yeah, very, very big. You can see it right there. Um, the, 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 that booster has 29 engines. Um, the, the next booster, uh, we actually increased the engine count to 33. We've kind of bounced around on engine count. Um, but because um, I think at one point we had like 37 engines and uh, <laughs> they went to 29. Uh, we finally settled on, on th 33 engines, which, which is about actually the most number of engines you can actually fit under that, that booster without like expanding the diameter. Um, yeah, and then this, this tower. Uh, this, this tower from, from design to construction was uh, 13 months. So it's quite an, quite an epic structure. Um, <clears throat> it, it's, it's really worth emphasizing that the the whole launch system, which is basically stage zero, uh, is, um, I'd say, as complex and difficult as either the booster or the ship. So I, I really want to emphasize that this is uh, and it's, it's a very difficult thing that requires a lot of hardcore engineering. And uh, it's really, um, like I said, the, the, the tower and the launch system which I call stage zero, is just as important as stage one and stage two. I mean, this is really some, some wild stuff here. In fact, I mean, hard to believe it's real, except, you know, <laughs> it's right there. So, yeah. And then Raptor development, uh, Raptor one was 185 tons of thrust. Uh, Raptor 2 is 230 tons of thrust, and I think over time uh, we can get that to probably 250 tons. Um, so that's, uh, and it's also um, significantly simplified. So you can see the difference between uh, V1 and V2. Uh, this, the, the V2 is, there's, you know, V1 looks like kind of like a Christmas tree <laughs> spaghetti pile. Um, a, lot of, a lot of fiddly bits. Um, and V2 is uh, greatly simplified while also increasing thrust at the same time. So it's, it actually, um, Raptor 2 costs about half as much as Raptor 1, despite having much more thrust. Uh, and I think just generally being um, a, a much easier engine to build uh, and a more robust engine. So um, very excited about Raptor version 2, and it's, it's only going to get better from here. Yeah, so Raptor 2 is pr pretty sick, um, and uh, we, we've actually, the, the peak thrust that we've operated Raptor 2 at it at this point is uh, 247 tons, um, and so I'm confident that uh, with some improvements we can, we can get to a 250-ton uh, operating point and, um, and, and continue to simplify and uh, sort of robustify the engine. So it's, it's really, a, it's a spectacular uh, piece of engineering, extremely difficult <laughs> to make and, and succeed. Uh, this is, the engine has been mind-bogglingly difficult, uh, but it is uh, one of the essential keys to, uh, I mean, it is, it is essential, obviously, to, to making uh, Starship work. Um, it, it'll be the first uh, full-flow stage combustion engine to, to get to orbit. Um, yeah. Kind of need that, need that uh, ISP and thrust to wait. <laughs>